Hi everybody, it's Kelly with the Cottable Fire District. We are here with uh, Training Officer Cahill, uh, Battalion Chief Peters, and Captain Brian Gettemeyer. Uh, we are just really wanting to talk to uh, the community today just about how we're being impacted by COVID and just how we are operating as a fire district. So, uh, Captain Gettemeyer, why don't you uh, tell the community a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, how long you've been with uh, the, the district, and how COVID's impacting you. Uh, my name is Brian Gettemeyer. I've been with the district for my 25th year now. I am a captain at A-Shift Station 2 in Harvester. Um, so, really what's impacting us is we're living together for our 48-hour shift with the crew, but uh, we're not able to go out. Uh, as much as we usually do. So we usually go out to do training and building inspections and, and have activities all day long um, and, and trying to restrict our, our movements and, and reduce our COVID experiences, our exposure risk. Um, we're, we're staying more at the engine house right now. Okay. We're trapped so inside like everybody else. Right. Right. So, you know, we know that the officers do a whole lot of training. Uh, how has it impacted you and your crew? Uh, are you still able to get any training in even at the house? Yes, we are doing training at the house. So usually uh, we try to get together with one or two other companies uh, to do training, but, but we're just restricted to just our company. So we're doing some training in the engine house. We're doing some uh, driving around the area, getting familiar, uh, pumping our truck in a parking lot where nobody's around, uh, doing some online CEU training to maintain our certification. So we're getting training in every day. It's just not that hands-on with other companies uh, that we're used to. Great. Uh, training Officer Cahill. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you share a little bit about, because you're the one that's organizing this training, uh, tell us a little bit about your role, uh, how long you've been with the district, and uh, how it's impacting you trying to schedule all of this training. Well, so I've been the training officer for about a year and a half now. I've been with Cottable for, going. it'll be 32 years in August. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, my role with the training is, so I'm supposed to make sure that we have training opportunities for all of our personnel, which there's about 60 uh, employees at Cottaville. And the, the coronavirus situation has made things very difficult because we do a lot of stuff together. Firefighters are hands-on people. And we, uh, you know, it's, a, it's not a job where you can sit at a computer and learn how to do things all the time. You need to get together and do practice skills um, and work together as a team. So it's been very difficult for the past, well, what, a month now at least. Um, and it's going to be that way probably till the end of May, hopefully not into June, because we knew that I think that um, people will go crazy. <laughs> so getting stuff scheduled has been um, difficult at best, and we're having to become imaginative trying to get stuff done. Absolutely. We're, we're working through it. Okay. So I know um, you've done a couple different creative things. Uh, obviously, we are utilizing Zoom right now, even for this interview. Uh, what are some things that you have done on Zoom calls to be able to um, help these guys out and, and do some training? I know, like you said, you've gotten kind of creative. I've heard you say you're driving around, taking pictures and different things like that. So what does that look like? So what we do, um, we do a lot of, we're working on a lot of command training. And we are uh, practicing our uh, doing initial radio reports or size ups uh, when, when the first arriving crew shows up on a scene and then doing a follow-up report and assigning um, the, the incoming um, pumpers or ladder trucks um, as they come into incident scenes, fires, car wrecks, whatever, whatever type of incident we respond to. So, uh, one way we practice that is by doing simulations and there's software out there and we have some of it where we can set up, um, take some pictures of houses, of businesses, and then I can, uh, and I can add fire and smoke to the, to the, to the picture and it's like a simulation and you can scroll through and we can do all four sides of the, of the house or business and it, it makes it a little more realistic than just imagining a fire at a house or a business um, so that 
the the firefighters can see exactly okay there's i'm show up on this two-story residential house and there's fire um, coming out the second floor window on the front side and there's smoke coming from the back of the house too it makes it a little more realistic for them and so they we do this with every crew at their own station and they talk on our radio training channel um, and they can all work together and uh, talk to each other and communicate and we work through we'll work through the incident a little bit um you can't go all the way through it because um well we're firefighters and i'm not that technical um as far as the computer stuff goes. So I haven't gotten to the point where we can go inside the house and there's fire inside, but uh, it's, we're getting there. We're doing the best we can trying to get the, get our folks the training they need to um, get the job done right now, but we're really looking forward to getting back together. All right, Battalion Chief Peters. Hello. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your role in the district, what a battalion chief is. I know when I came in and people say BC, that's what we commonly call you. Uh, I didn't necessarily know what BC stood for. Now I do, and I know it's important. So tell us a little bit about uh, what your role is uh, and how, um, you know, just even how our shifts work and our stations. You know, we have four different stations within the Cottleville district. What role do you play in um, you know, keeping everything organized and the uh, firefighters knowing what to do. So my name is Dan Peters and I've been in Cottleville for about 20 years now and I am a BC. Uh, the battalion chiefs basically run daily operations. We manage all four of the stations. We respond to the larger emergency calls and manage the trucks. Uh, for example, if we get a residential structure fire, we usually get six trucks responding. So it's my job to manage all six of those trucks, make sure they all have a job and assignment, and uh, we put the fire out safely. On a daily basis, I'm responsible for training. I work with Mike and I work with my captains to make sure that we train and we play together well when we show up on the scene, we work as a team. So we do a lot of, we bring the guys together, bring the trucks together a lot um, to do training scenarios where we all can communicate, can talk, work together, and build that that system of training so that when we do show up on the scene, everybody kind of is used to working together and everything runs real smooth for us. Great, wonderful. Uh, back to Captain Gettemeyer. We recently had a large fire at the Turnberry Apartments and I'm sure a lot of our uh, community members read articles about how many different um, fire uh, district showed up on that fire. And we've heard Mike and Dan talk a little bit about that mutual aid and different things like that. Uh, you were actually on that fire. So why don't you share a little bit with us how being able to do all of this training, not only with the crews within uh, or in the different firehouses within Cottleville district, but also uh, St. Charles County. Share a little bit about how important that is and how you guys are able to work together so well. I think the nice thing about our, our county is our training is all together. So we run more as a, a total fire department, all as one, one fire department than a bunch of separate organizations. And you don't always see that in the United States. A lot of, of fire departments operate singly um, and, and we kind of all train together. So when we got there, uh, we reported into the incident commander, which was the <coughs> county's uh, battalion chief. Uh, and we know him well. So he felt comfortable with us. We feel comfortable with him. He gave us the assignment. Uh, we were assigned to do initially some searches on the uh, first and second floors of the uh, involved apartments, but we were assigned with another Central County unit. Um, and that captain and I have trained together. We've worked together before, and we were very comfortable with our crews together doing, a, doing that initial search. When we came out, um, because our air bottles were running low, we had to hand off our assignment to a captain from uh, St. Charles City. Once again, we trained with him. So it was a pretty easy handoff. He went and did some more searches, some more tasks. When they got low on their air bottles, we had filled up ours and, and then he handed it back to us. So um, it went really, really smooth because we, we knew each other. We, we called each other by our first names uh, and we're pretty comfortable. And they said, hey, we made it this far. We need you to go check something else out, we, we kind of trust, there was that trust there. Um, and, and just, it was, it was a very comfortable operation. Great, thank you for that explanation. 
Well, I want to thank you guys for your time today. I really appreciate you sharing with us uh, all of your insight. And we look forward to hearing from you from uh, more uh, different educational videos as we go forward. So stay safe, take care, and we will see you next time.